everyone. So, I have had a request to do a video uh, to help with shoulders. So, some people already have a few like little niggles in the shoulder and you, you think not much of it. But the one problem is, is the moment we get back in the air, there will be a chance that it can turn into quite a big of a injury or a hindrance or just more painful. So seeing as we're in lockdown, we can use this as a great excuse just to like get our shoulders healthy and rehab them, give them a rest from the very strenuousness of Ariel. Um, so I have lots and lots and lots of exercises for shoulders. I'm not going to try and cram them all into this video because this video will probably be two or three hours long because I do want to give you the information on how to do these moves correctly and what you should be feeling, which is weird. Not all of them are going to be a massive burn um, like you would if you were lifting weights. Uh, some of them is just like a sensation and just knowing, is it working right? Anyway, I'll stop rambling. Let's move on for shoulders. So we're just going to start by doing some shoulder rolls first. Just nice and big, and try and like get full range. So you really gonna like kind of bleh, can't think of words. Kind of hollow your body here, and really arch your body at the back. So we're letting our spine get involved as well. And then we're gonna go the other way, making them as big as possible. And let's just warp the neck as well. So we're really gonna think about these shoulders. And the arms squeezing down. So in the air, I would never say force your shoulders down. But just because we want to kind of waken up our traps, I do want us to think about pushing the shoulders down and away as we take our ear to the shoulder. And then we're going to go to the other side. It's very different when we're in the air. So this is only for the warm-up. And I find when you do this, as well as pushing your shoulders down, think about squeezing your arms in. This turns our lat on, and then it kind of anchors our shoulder a bit more, and then this gets more of a stretch. But again, we're not holding these stretches because this is just a warm up. So at the end, you can always hold these for a lot longer on each side and really give them a good stretch out. And let's do some semicircles and just letting the head drop either side. And then we're going to do my, currently my most favourite exercise, is penguins. So all we're going to do is we're going to flex our hands, we're going to push our arms to our side, keep our arms really straight, and we're just going to shrug our shoulders up and down, so you look like a weird penguin. Um, if you start bending your arms, it won't be as effective, so really keep those arms straight, hands flexed, and all it's doing is getting the blood pumping in our arms, shoulders, your hands should be getting warmer, do lots and lots of these. And this is a really good quick warm up as well for aerial, anything, handstands, and release. And we're just going to do some nice circles so we can either go both arms. One way, if you want to do arms in opposite directions, completely up to you. We're just going to go all directions, we're going to go opposites, we're going to go both arms forwards, both arms back. Basically, just lots of movement and lots of arm circles. And we're just going to do a couple of roll downs through our spine. So first thinking about if your weight is very shifted forwards, we're just going to bring our weight back onto our heels. We're going to have a little tilt. Not a tilt. That's a tilt. We're just going to have a little scoop with the pelvis. Sorry, words aren't working today for me. Just going to a little scoop tucking under of our pelvis just so we engage our core as well. So your bum is squeezing. Nod your head down. And we're just going to roll all the way down. Nice and slow. And then once we're down, we're going to squeeze our bum to come up. So our legs are very bent in this one. And let's do two more of these. And that's my hair hitting the floor. And one last one. And once we're done, we're just going to stay down. We're going to straighten one leg, bend the other, swap it over. Swap it over, so we're just walking on the spots. Make sure you're looking at your knees. Heels are on the floor. 
just to wake everything up. And then we're going to roll back up. So this next exercise is a warm-up for the exercise. So I'm not going to worry too much. We're just going to do, we're going to be by a wall. Hopefully you have some wall space. Um, and you're just going to draw some circles with your arm. The upper body's moving, just because we're warming up. We're not going to worry too much about it just yet. We're just drawing some circles. Now we're going to start adding more information on. As you're drawing these cir circles, I want you to really reach forward as far as you can. So you're trying to get as far forward without leaning forward. So try to extend the arm. And then it's going as high to the ceiling and as far back as possible. So really lengthening out your arm through that shoulder. Now, as you can see, my chest likes to rotate in as my arm comes back. This is my body compensating. What we're going to try and do now is not have that happen. So have a look at the distance you are from the wall. I'm currently about this far away. There we go. <laughs> so once I get to the sticking point where I know this moves, I'm going to resist it. So I'm going to really stretch my arm up as far away and think about keeping this open, keeping my core engaged. And then I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going, oh, as far as we can. Now, if you find you're getting to here, and this still is a huge coming in, even though you're resisting it a lot, just step away from the wall a bit. This will make it easier. So now, this should be much easier for me. I'm thinking about this shoulder not moving, my core is engaging, and really reaching as far back as I can with my arm. Yeah. So sometimes start further away from the wall if it's too hard. And it's too much too soon. There is nothing wrong with going, right, my body's not ready for this. Let's make it a bit easier and do a few, about five to ten nice and easy ones. And then we can always get closer to the wall once our shoulder's warmed up. And do a few more, a little bit harder. If you have lovely white walls, I would suggest make sure your hands are very well washed before doing this, because we have lovely marks on your wall afterwards. So we're going to swap sides. So again, first few, we're not worrying about anything. We're just drawing some circles. Rip cage is moving, shoulders moving. Not thinking of much just yet. So now we're going to add. We're going to start thinking about the extension of the arm. It's really reaching forwards as much as we can, but without that tilt of the body. We're going to reach, and then we're going to reach all the way up, and then we're going to reach all the way back. We're going to do a couple of these really reaching. My sticking point is as it gets to the back, which is for most people as well. So now we're going to start concentrating on the shoulder. I already know I want to go a bit further away from the wall. I'm not that mean. <laughs> so please be nice to your body. Start off nice and easy. It's a nice way to warm up the joint. If you try and basically have that ego with yourself of, oh, I can do the hottest version. There's always a risk that you're just going to injure yourself and be nice to your body. So come away from the wall, make it nice and easy for at least five of them. So we're going to really lengthen the arm. We're going to think about this shoulder and the ribcage not moving. I'm still thinking about my core being engaged and I'm really reaching with that arm. This is still hard, even though this is the easier version, I still find this quite a lot of work. Once the shoulder joints warm, just a little shuffling close to the wall. And this is where it gets hard. Don't let the ribcage move or the shoulder up on this side here. If you're working with someone in your family, this is a really good one to do as a pair because they can be a visual for you. You can film yourself, but sometimes it's nice to have instant feedback about what's going on. Ooh. Give your shoulders a roll. We're going to work with the wall once more. This exercise is not, not nice. This is very much an active flex, and you really need to be strict with yourself. Your body will want to cheat to make you feel you can do it. So that whole thing that was happening before of where the shoulder and the ribcage can twist in, that's the body compensating. It's finding flexibility in other part of your body to be able to do this. So it might mean you just have to step away from the wall further. We're going to start easy. <laughs> We're going to take our arms 
of 12, and we're just going to reach up to the ceiling, and we're just going to bring our arm off the wall, and back, so hopefully you can see what I mean, so it's touching the wall, and stretching it towards the ceiling, arm comes off the wall. Now we're going to go a bit further, so we're just going to go a little bit further back, so this could be, this is a clock, that's 12, we're just going to go to 1 o'clock, and we're going to do the same thing. Concentrate on your posture. Lengthen the arm. Tap it off at one o'clock for three times. We're then going to go to two o'clock. Tap it off for two times. And we're going to go a bit further. And this is where it's really hard. I need to come further away from this. <laughs> and we're going to tap. And we're going to get to three o'clock. Lengthen and tap it off the wall. And then, of course, it gets much easier once we get to four. So depending where your mobility is, if 12 is nice and easy and four o'clock is nice and easy, work between 12 and four. If you find actually four and five o'clock is still hard, especially if you're close to the wall, keep working on them. So find what's best for your body. Where is it most challenging? Work in that area most. And really think about the lift up with the arm. So we're gonna go to the other side. So I know for 12 o'clock, I could be so close to the wall, this would all be easy. But I know the moment I get to one o'clock, it's gonna be much, much harder. So I'm gonna step away from the wall. We're just gonna do three at 12. We're just gonna think about lengthening the arm as it comes off and engaging the core. We're then gonna to go to one o'clock. But we're not gonna let this roll in. And we're tapping for three times off and on the wall. We're gonna to go to two o'clock. We're going to try and keep the posture as much as we can. Shuffle away from the wall if you need to. And then we're going to go to three. And then four. So again, you can be as far away from the wall as you need to be. Like do what's best for your body. Please, please, please listen to your body. Don't be a martyr. As, as much as my students know, and I like giving them evil conditioning, I also want you to listen to your body. <laughs> but if you're all the way off the wall this far, that's fine, be that far away. So, shoulders now should be lovely and warm after all of that. What else did I write down? So we're gonna do what is called a floor pull-up. So some of us don't have pull-up bars, but we still wanna um, practice our pull-ups. So this is, there are different versions of this and they do get harder. We're just gonna stick to the easier one today. And when you watch my first video, and most of you know, I talk a lot about internal external rotation. So we're gonna work with an external rotation but with, a, with a lengthen through the shoulders or, or a push. I'm gonna face you first just to show you what I mean. So if my arms are up, this would be external. This would be an internal rotation be a push up. So what I want us to be doing is push up with a little external. So it's not push up and all the external that my shoulder come all the way back down again. Yeah? So we want as much push as we can with a little external rotation. So this is where the muscle, the lat, serratus anterior mostly, the muscle that comes around here, it's wrapping in. So it's the closing of the armpit. So by opening of the armpit I mean it's flaring out to the side. So that's my internal rotation. Armpit is flaring. We don't want this one. We want it to be a little external with a push on the armpit coming inwards. So it should be facing. So when we're going to be on the floor, your armpit should be facing the floor and your elbows too. So if you find your elbows are coming out to the side like this, we already know we've lost something a bit. So really think about even the elbows, the bony part of that elbow facing the floor. So we're going to go into a child's pose. Again, sounds easy. Child's pose is nice, right? <laughs> We're going to make it harder. So, child pose, if you don't know what it is, is just this one here. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to talk with my head up, but you're going to be looking at the floor. You're going to really extend your arms as far forward as you can, so your shoulders are up by your ears, and a little external rotation, about 20% of an external rotation. It's very small. Shame I don't have a drone to show you from above because then I could really show you. And the thing about the armpit, facing the floor, elbow, body part, facing the floor. And then what we're going to do is you're going to spread out your fingers, 
And you're going to push your hand so hard into the floor. You're pushing it down. And once you've pushed it really hard down, you're going to think about dragging your hand towards you. Now, if your hand is actually here and it slides towards you, you are clearly not pushing enough into the floor. You're going to be pushing so hard that when you try and drag your hand towards you, it's not really going to move. If it does, maybe a centimetre or two, nothing huge. We're going to do this three times. So we're going to push down for a good three to five seconds, and then we're going to drag three to five seconds, and then we're just going to let everything release, and then we'll go again. You should be able to hear my voice, but we'll see. So let's go into our child's pose. Let's get this set up. So arms quite far away. Your rib cage is on your thighs. If your butt is off your heels, just to, some flexibility issues, stick a block, put a toy, book, pillow, anything there, make it comfy. So we are here. My shoulders are up by my ears. I'm going to add a little external rotation. I'm going to think about the elbows coming in towards the floor. So they might still be sticking out to the side. That's fine, but really think about them coming under. I know hypermobility and everything changes everything. But think about you want the bony part coming towards the floor, armpit facing the floor. Get your hair out of the way. <laughs> so we are ready to start. Spread out your fingers. Push your hands into the floor. Four, five, four, three, two, one. Think about dragging them towards you for five, four, three, two, one, and release. So even when you're dragging them towards you, remember you're still pushing into the floor. So technically it's a 10 second push into the floor with a five second drag towards you. We're going to go twice more. So ready? And push your hands into the floor for five, four, three, push harder, two, one. Keep pushing and now drag your hands towards you. Five, four, three, two, one. Release. Have a wiggle. You need to reset, stretch your arms out, make sure they are shoulder width and not wider. Shoulders are up to your ears. Little external rotation, and off we go. Push. Five, four, three, two, one, and keep the drag for five, four, three, two, one. Release. Turn it off. So you can do three sets of that. If you wanted three sets of three, don't need to do more than that, okay? This one is really a good at getting us to switch on our serratus. Now this next exercise is very strange, looks easy, as with most things. Um, but we're doing this one purely to feel what our serratus anterior feels like when it switches on. So <laughs> if you put your arm on, it's at a right angle. So the wrist is in line with my elbow, elbow in line with my shoulder. Now what I'm going to think about is bringing my elbow in. It's not going to be a huge where I wiggle anything else. Sounds like a weird dance routine there. So the elbow comes in just a little bit. Now you can do this against the wall. I'm doing it in front because I want to explain it from the front. So you can have this against the wall and it just gives you a reference. So the back of your hand would be touching the wall. You would not let your elbow touch the floor. Floor. Wall. All of this against the wall. I'm sorry. Words. So this would be into the back of the wall. Elbow would not be touching the wall. So from here, we're going to really think about elbow coming in. This should actually already be turning our serratus on. It's doing a little scoop. And we're going to take our arm up. And we're going to do it slowly. It's not just an up-down. We're going to lose everything then. As we think about taking our arm up, the elbow is still coming in. I'm still resisting against my invisible wall. And it's about here. I can really feel my serratus turn on. It's this just there, that part. So if you wear a bra, sports bra, just about the top of where it's under your armpit. And you're trying to get your arm as high as you can. And then you're going to bring it down, keeping the same resistance. Yeah? I find if everything's getting tight up here, if you're watching TV, do a few of these. If you're in the kitchen, do a few of these. It's amazing at just reminding the serratus it should be doing some work as well, and it shouldn't be your trapeze turning on all the time. Um, trapezium even, I call it trapeze airless thing. 
Because um, sometimes when the muscles down here don't work, this big, big muscle of our trapezium will switch on and do the work instead. And that's why we end up with knots. Everything pulls, everything pulls in here. All right, anyway, let's just do the other side, make sure we're even. So we're going to think about this elbow coming in, imaginary wall there, and we're just going to think about trying to straighten that arm without anything else changing in our body. So I can feel it here. You might feel it in other places too. If you're feeling it in your back, your lower back, make sure your core is engaged and then bringing it down. So you can do lots of these. You can use them in the supermarket, but people will probably stare. So if I'm doing them against the wall, you might not be able to see as well what I'm getting across. But basically, from about wrist, back of hand, and against the wall. And you can do these standing as well. I just like crouching down. So from there, get nice and close to the wall. Elbow is not touching, and I'm sliding my arm up, trying to make sure nothing else changes in my posture, and then I'm bringing it down. But my elbow does not touch the wall. It's very, very important. I'll keep repeating that. <laughs> but the back of the hand does. So sometimes it's really nice to have that resistance in the wall. And this is where you should feel it turning on. So it's in here. Yeah. Again, if you're not sure, message me. It's not a big burn. It's not like a big light bulb moment of aha. That intense sensation. It can be quite light, especially if you haven't done much Pilates or that much aerial, you're just not used to feeling the stabilizer muscles turning on. So we just gotta tune in a bit. It's just a different sensation. Even if it's very, very small, that's the right sensation we're looking for. So we are going to do what was the other one? Windscreen wipers. For this, you need a TheraBand. These last two exercises are TheraBand exercises. 